Uh, so uh, let's welcome with me uh, the last speaker for today. Lukas Holzer will be talking about sketching the web. And I already know that this is going to be an amazing talk. And don't miss out. Watch it and have fun. Hello, everyone. Um, today, sketching the web. That's my Twitter handle, so stay tuned. My name, Lukas Holzer. Yeah, I'm currently working at Dynatrace as a design system engineer. And the half year was like a journey or for Sketch. Maybe you know Sketch. It's a design tool. And I had the job to automate our UI process. And that's what I'm talking about. So designs and how they differ in production. You know, there is always this kind of a design process yeah, that starts maybe with a design. In our case, a button, a real simple button. Then in this process, there might be a developer. This developer implements this button. And then the code is going to be shipped in the web. So maybe a couple of you think, OK, that's done. That's our process. But I say, nope, sorry. That's the start, because there's always a project manager that say, we have to change the world, so maybe I can't go along with this green button, so why just make it yellow? And then the whole process is spinning again, and the developer has to implement it, and now the yellow button is in the product. So you think, now it's over. Sorry, it isn't. So maybe there is a CTO and say, I love green. So why don't make a green button? And the whole process is going again. And in the end, uh, it's a long running, always running process. So there isn't really an end. So in our case, we have this beautiful page. That's the Dynatrace design system. So we have here this button page with some Angular components, demo, and the project manager comes to the developer and say, or to the designer, hey, this green, it's past year, so maybe we go with a new trend. Why don't try pink? Because we all love pink, so let's redesign it, put an ugly font on there, and yeah, as a designer, you maybe have to put different variants of that in different colors, because with the first solution, nobody is comfortable, so the designer has to pixel perfect redesigning the whole screen, and then he can focus on the UX task to change the color or change the font. That can be really annoying, because you spend multiple hours to build the whole screen. It's like, oh, all the tiles in the section here or the button examples, you have to redesign it because, yeah, it's shipped and we have to do it. So maybe you're using Photoshop if you're old fashioned or if you're kind of a fresh designer, you're already using Sketch. So what is Sketch? Sketch is a UX design tool. Past years, there was Photoshop. Everyone did it with Photoshop, but seriously, Photoshop is for image editing and not for UX designs because Sketch has a real power in making UX designs in several sizes with reusable patterns because, sorry, no, wrong. If you take a look here at these problems, you see that's a repeatable pattern. So maybe you don't want to make the whole pattern again and again. So what a developer says, yeah, let's make it in a function or put it in a variable and reuse it. So Sketch can do that because there are symbols. You can reuse these symbols. You can create a symbol for a problem and you can reuse it. That's the real benefit of Sketch. And in our example, the simple button, you see, we have an artboard here, that's the button, there is a folder, a text, and a background. Really simple, that simple. So 
sketch has the open file format. So that's the real benefit, because if you unzip a sketch file, you get a bunch of JSON files. And we all know JSON, maybe that's something familiar. We can go with that. So in our example, unzip button.sketch, we get the folder with a button. And in this folder, we get a subfolder that has a cryptical page. This cryptical ID is like a unique ID in Sketch. And then we get a previous folder with a preview.png. That's basically, hey, maybe the button image as PNG file. And then we get a document JSON, a meter JSON, and some user information. That's basically what Sketch is needed around for the whole file format. So in this talk, we're focusing on these pages. So if we take a look how this page is built, then we have this root page object. Then we have an artboard. This artboard is example, button light, secondary, default, variant. And on this artboard, there is a group. The group holds our text. And the text has, of course, some text style, because we want to style it with a font family, font size, and everything that goes along with some fonts. On the other side, there's this rectangle. And the rectangle defines our background shape for the button. So a button consists out of a background and a text. But a rectangle isn't enough, because a rectangle needs some style. So the style needs a fill. And to define where the rectangle is drawn, we need some points to define where the rectangle is drawn. So how does this page look like? So you see, it's a JSON. We can read something. We have this class. We have this object ID. And we have plenty more. More? Sorry, more. So oh my god, yeah. And that's only for a button example. Let's imagine a real complex page. So this JSON is getting kilometers long. But we're all developers and a little bit of hackers, so let's try to reverse engineer that. Because Sketch has no official documentation, of course. Why? We would need that. So in our case, we have this page. And if we collect all the root objects, we get like short object. And if we take the rectangle object that's deeply nested inside this page, we get root objects as well. So if we collapse everything. So first, we see we have a class that's similar. We have some ID. We have some export options and a frame. To the frame object, that will come later. But we have some other objects, like state. Is it fixed to viewport? Is it visible? Is it locked? I think it's self-explaining. Then we have the name and some name properties, resizing constraints like rotation, resizing type, so that's basically information for, information for Sketch. If you resize the object, um, how does it go along? So then we have a clipping mask, because you can mask objects. And last but not least, we have the style. So because you can style everything in Sketch, there is a style property. But if you take a closer look to this completely different object, you see a lot of similarities. So what if we create the TypeScript interface for that? Then you see this simple interface. I call it sketch base, because nearly every object extends from this interface. So we have a lot of objects in Sketch. I will show later. And nearly everyone has these styles, except frame and has click through or layers that are optional in this case. So if we take a look at this frame I was talking before, and we expand it, we see that it's got a rect and an object ID and a height and a width. So maybe if you see the values of the width and the height and you see the button, you can think, hey, that's the connection. Because 
In Sketch, you have to define like a canvas where you can draw your button. And that's typical it. You define a canvas where everything is happening. So if you take a look at the point, then you see curve from 0, 0. That are some things for SVGs and shapes. But 0, 0. Then the next that is collapsed has the values 1, 0. Then we get 1, 1. And last but not least, 0, 1. And if you take a look at the corner radius, you see 3. So three pixels around it. And now you see, oh, that's the shape of my rectangle. And if we take a look at the style object, you see, oh, we've got an array with fills. It's an array because you can stack multiple fills on the button. Of course, why don't? And we need the color. So our color is an RGB value with 0, 161 doesn't really match this value. So how do you come to these values? It's very simple. Because 255 bits, so let's divide it and we get our value. So it looks everything like a syntax tree because we have deeply nested objects. You saw the page tree before. And that's my point. Let's get the hands dirty. So let's go some coding views. because. When we take a look sorry, at these object types, we see there is an artboard, there's a string, there is a blur, bitmap, et cetera. And then we have here this base interface. And the implementation is we've got an AST. So I build it like an abstract syntax tree for the sketch values, the document JSON behind, that holds the information. So in our case, there is this group that extends the base and adds some on top functionality on this base. And there is a rectangle as well, and a page, and everything has this kind of AST to, in the end, say, generate object. And if you see this generate object, it returns an object, and that's the sketch object. So in this case, it's a sketch group. And with that information, we can stick a whole tree together. So the question is, how do we get the information from the page? Because now we can build an AST, but how do we get there? We can parse an SCSS file or a CSS file to get the style information, the width and the height. Nope. Sorry. Nope. I've been there, and it wasn't a good idea because in CSS, there is like this cascade, and you have a lot of worries with positioning the elements because is it position fixed, absolute, or something like that. It's not reflected in the CSS file because there is a tool who is doing the magic, and you know this tool. It's Google Chrome. So why don't let the browser handle this stuff for you? That leads me to my next point, why don't scrape these properties out of a browser? But how we do that? So on the one side, we have the button text that's in our web view or in our web page. And on the other side, we have the button in the sketch file. So first of all, we are spawning a headless Chrome and injecting the page. And when we're loading the button on this page, there are two really useful commands. Maybe, you know, get bounding client rect, and that returns a DOM rect. And in this DOM rect, there is the position on the page, like the x and the y coordinates, the width and the height of this object. And it doesn't matter if it's positioned absolute or fixed or something else. You always get the current position. And the second point is the get computed style, because the browser computes your style, and you get the CSS style declaration. So you know always which styles are shipped in the browser. Maybe some of you know that, because if you go to the debug tools in the browser, and you watch the CSS properties, there is the option to view the computed styles. And there you see which properties, like every CSS property that is possible is on this object. And 
I've done like an agent that's going to be injected in this headless chrome that is scraping all the properties. Like it's a DOM traverser that is going through the DOM tree and on every DOM node there is a visitor which is visiting the properties and scraping all the properties with these two crucial functions out of the element. And with this I can do an abstract version of the DOM with all the meta information I need to draw it in Sketch. So when we're talking about all properties, that's not correct because we don't need all properties because there are so many objects on a node and it would be horrible to load it every time for every object. So I've focused it on some beneficial objects that, is, that are real crucial to draw things. So our style declaration is a subset of the CSS style declaration that takes the background color and the background image, some border properties like border top, left, bottom, right, and the radius, of course, and the width, then the box shadow, the padding, the color, the display, some fill and font family, font size, line height, letter spacing for the fonts, opacity for transparent colors, then the stroke width, the text decoration, the text align, text transform, transform, visibility, and the white space for text. So with all that information, I will give you some short example because maybe you think, hey, he's talking a lot of bullshit now, and I will prove you the opposite. So I mentioned the site Barista Dynatrace.com, our design system. And when we open that in our browser, you see this wonderful page. And this wonderful page has like this button definition. So you see the button here? That's the page we were currently watching before in the screens. And we got the UX task now to change the color and the text. So you see, would be some hours to draw this in Sketch, maybe, yeah? So let's take a look. And what we need is a configuration file. So here we define the host, like HTTPS, then the URL, Barista. Then we say we're interested from drawing the root element down. So my DOM traverser needs to know where to inject. And then the pages, like the root page and the components button page. And we should result it in a library with the file.sketch. And there's some Chrome config with the weed and the hate. And if we're heading up to the command line. And then we're, okay, we're in current directory, then we say debug true, that we can see something. And sketch open close, that's like we are opening and closing sketch. Ah, oh, thank you very much. <laughs> and then note this sketch generator. That's my dist file. And then you see debug is currently on. In the background you see, okay, there is a headless chrome spawning that's navigating to the site barista dynatrace com. Waiting till the page is ready loaded. That can take some while if the internet is very slow here inside. And then we are opening the second page. That's the button page. And we're drawing it, so like waiting till the page is fully loaded because it's important because there are Angular applications inside and we want to draw the Angular applications as well. So we need the idle state of the browser. It was fast before. So maybe you're all in the internet and tweeting about the new fancy shit Dynatrace is doing. Come on, it's like navigation timeout exceeded. Sorry, this is like a showcase problem, maybe. That's boring. 
So guys from Siemens, maybe do you have problems with your internet connection? <laughs> it's quite slow, I would say. Maybe maybe we do that really. <laughs> iPhone. <laughs> so maybe it's the browser. No. You see the page loaded before somehow quicker. Maybe is it because it's on the projector? I don't know, but we can skip that because I did that before to present the file. So let's somehow uh, oh, we have only a library file here. Okay, maybe we're canceling the debug mode, then it's maybe faster. So, this sketch generate. Normally, it's like 200 milliseconds. Uh, the beamer is. It's crazy. Maybe I go out of the VPN, maybe it's the problem. <laughs> can be so it was the so sorry for that can I quit the fucking global protect and do it with debug again Okay, now I have no internet connection. So, last try. Otherwise, you have to believe me because I have a backup video. Okay, yeah, you see, page opens, yeah, that loads faster. So, maybe it was really the Wi Fi connection. Yep, and I draw the page, and now we are here. No, that's not the page, because we have to navigate to the page, of course. Here you see, that's the sketch file with the button page. So take a look. We've got here, we have all these icons. So I can go here. We are having the representation of the DOM tree, the app root of the Angular example, component, tab, tab content. Now we can navigate through to the Angular demo, component demo, component demo. You see a lot of diffs paragraph, and now we are here at the DT Dynatrace button, and there is the background, there is the icon. Now we can say, hey, give me the icon, and hey, you see, it's an SVG. I draw the SVG, and the SVG consists of the shape path with the glasses, the tie, and the shape around, and now we can go ahead and say, hey, I like it pink. Oh yeah, that sounds good. <laughs> and if we're not familiar with this text, I'm gonna say, hey, cool pink button. It's awesome, or because if you don't are in a VPN connection, it's really fast. <laughs> and the designer can now focus on real UX tasks like changing the colors to pink. <laughs> so heading back to the slides, at Dynatrace we said, hey, that's the beginning. I was there three months ago. Why don't step, uh, step further and can we automate the whole library? Like we have the Angular component in the GitHub on the one side and on the other side we want our sketch library. And yeah, it's possible because I've written uh, Angular meta parser. It's like I'm scraping all the properties out of the Angular code, and then I'm generating an Angular app, and then the Angular app is spawning the examples. And here you see a demo because 
I need the VPN to get the, color, the files from the Bitbucket. So that's the backup plan for slow internet connection. And here you see in the top, we're generating the meta information from the code, like the TypeScript compiler. And then we're drawing all the symbols, and there are plenty of symbols, like 700 symbols that are switching through. And with that, we're drawing every single icon in the whole library, and we're shipping this library automated by the CI. So the whole CI is to taking the latest components from the Angular components of the Git, and in the end, there is a pull request in the design GitHub repo where the latest library version is committed with the version of the Angular components. So you see, all is going through, then whole generating, 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 and Sketch is opening the library file. And here you see an example of alerts. So with icons, all the icons, with the buttons, Every button variant, we have a lot of button variants that are not trace in our product, so like disabled states, primary states, secondary states, warning states. We have a lot of expandables, tiles. And the cool thing is, because I analyzed the source code, I know we have an icon. And I talked about reusable symbols, and I draw the icon before, so I know, hey, that's a DT icon, that's an Angular component, and if I recognize an Angular component inside another Angular component, I can reference it by symbol, and you see, I can switch it to a yellow agent symbol very easily. So if you think you need that, <laughs> we're currently searching real men or women for our development team, and it will be open source soon, so I've got few tickets in my sprint to open source it. And it will be open sourced at Dynatrace Sketchmine because we are mine workers and we're mining CSS properties and sketch things. And on NPM, the organization Sketchmine. So follow me on Twitter and I'll give you updates about the next things, our next big steps that are coming. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I hope I didn't uh, promise too much. Thank you all for coming today. Um, we can stay here, I think, until 10, if I'm half past nine, half past 10, from what I've heard. And yeah, enjoy a few more minutes, have another drink, uh, gather around the tables there. And yeah, thank you for coming. Thanks. Thank you.